to it's time for me to add to the digital confusion of spay rods, spay lines, spay setups. Uh, my favorite comment is if you Google spay anything on the internet, your server will self-destruct and melt down into a pile of silicone goo. There's so much to come at you. Yeah, I'm going to add to the confusion and to the all uh, the other mayhem that's online. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over how I set my rods up for the type of fishing that I do, mostly tributary fishing um, in the Great Lakes. I keep it very simple, very basic. So if you're new to spay fishing, spay casting and all this, and trying to set a rod up, this is how I would recommend for somebody just getting started um, setting up rods. Keep a note, I'm going to be showing some stuff, some different products from different companies. I have no affiliation with them. I got to buy it just like the rest of you. I use it because it works and it's available. So that's why I have it. So keep that in mind when I start talking different products and stuff like that. And some, you see some um, brand names and stuff like that. It's not because I'm endorsed by them or I'm sponsored. It's just I'm like you. I got to go out and buy it and use it. The other thing is um, we are about getting into salmon season. So I'm usually at a very quiet spot, but the road's getting busy. So you can hear a little traffic noise. Please excuse that. Wish I could edit it out, but I'm not that good. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to show a couple different um, setups, like right here I got a 13, or excuse me, this one right here is a 12 and a half foot 7 weight, that is one of my favorite rods, um, I can handle a lot of different water flows, and I'm going to go over how I set this up, and then I'm going to show a couple different lines and a couple different rods set in different ways that I might use in different conditions, and I'll tell you about it. And then when I get done, if you're beginning, I'll say, this is what I recommend you do to get started. Um, there's no definitive rule to this. Um, what I suggest is a good way to get started, get your feet wet, get casting, get fishing, have some success. As you evolve, as you do practice more and you get into more into spay casting, more into spay fishing, you will create your own style of casting. You will come up with your own style of setup that works good for you, that you like. This is just a foundation to get started. Nothing more. Um, I know there's going to be a whole bunch of spay gurus that will like to dis dis disagree with me because they can. But I found this works best for people just getting started. Or people just want to go out and make the equipment work and not get it overly complicated and keep it easy. And, and effective. And that's usually what I do is I like the KISS rule. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, make it easy. Make it effective. Let's have some success. Let's catch fish with it. Let's make some pretty casts, let's cover the water, and let's not beat ourselves up while doing it. So this is the setup that I'm going to be working with. Start with the most basic, the most standard setup I use. Since most people don't watch YouTube channels to the end, I'll put the good stuff in the front where you can see it. This is, this is a uh, 13 half foot 7 weight. It's another one of my favorite rods. Um, this I'm going to take this, pull the lines off, show you how to set this up. Please keep in mind, if you have a switch rod, the same setup will work and I'll probably talk about switch rods back and forth even though I got a spay in my hands a 13 footer keep in mind the information and setting up will be very applicable to a switch rod uh, so I'm going to start from the back end I'm going to pull off the driver head and in this case as you can see now I'm kind of self videoing so you can bear with me you can see this thin um, orange line and you get back into here it actually gets a little thinner and it goes gray. This is a real connect core um, running line. It's coated, it's built just like a fly line except it's really thin. And this is the, uh, this orange spot is a little bit fatter. And what I like about it is it's a little fatter here. It's easy to handle. This is usually where you're handling it. And it, it's pretty, pretty friendly to work with. And this is a general um, fly line coating. I like about it because it's easy to hang on to. They shoot pretty good. Now I'm going to show running line here when I get done with this mono. Um, the advantage of mono, it's cheap. The advantage of mono is it doesn't fill up your reels because I got to have a pretty good size chunky reel. And you can just, as the end of it gets worn, you just cut it back so you can get a lot of mileage out of it. Disadvantage is it tangles around your stuff kind of easy, but however, the newer stiffer ones are great. And it's used to, it's kind of like hang, hanging on. Um, Grease pigs, so it's really slick and slippery. In fact, yeah, my um, 
my other rod's got the uh, mono line on, so I'll show you the mono line. So you'll be able to see see both. So this is regular fly line. It's designated running line. And then what you do is you obviously put your running line on. And then these line systems are more of a modular system, so you can kind of adjust, add, and take away. So it's a loop-to-loop -loop connection. Get it right in here. You can just see a very nice loop-to-loop. -loop. Kind of use my shirt as the background. And the um, this case is the scavenger the Skagit head, which I call the driver head, is looped on. And generally speaking, well, part of it's in the rod here. These things are anywhere from 16 feet to 20 feet, 22 feet. Uh, how long do I get? Uh, your, I usually work personally, I run the, I like the 20 footers. And if I'm, like on this rod here being 13, I might go a little longer, like a 22, 24, if I can find them these days. A lot of them are shorter, like 18 or under 20 feet. Your switch rods, your 20, 18 or 20 foot scad you had will be just fine. You want your your driver head, I got still got mosquitoes, your driver head and the tip because these things, these gadgets are they're meant to run a tip. Now I'll pull it up here and I'll show you the other end. So I'm going to line all over the place. I'll get a big tangle up in here in a minute. Once again, let's ride down out of the way here. Is This is the front end of the Skagit. Dunk. And in this case, I have a tip on. And you can do anything from a floating tip to various sink tips. Um, I'll talk about tips in a few minutes. But they're always meant to be ran with a tip. In this case, I got... In this particular case, I have... Um, 10 foot of um, T8 on because this is what I'm going to be using when I'm fishing tomorrow and Also while I'm talking about it, everybody's gonna ask how long my leaders are off sink tips a Lot of my water. I like to run a five or about a four to six foot leader. This is about five feet and in this particular case I got a We all like flies. I got a really cool get it sort of focus um, tube fly on. So I'm gonna run this to, that's probably my starting fly why did I tie it on for tomorrow to start with? Because it looks cool and I want to fish it. I'll probably take it off pretty quick and see the water, see how the fish are behaving. But this is a basic setup. So running line to a Skagit head to a tip. Now, what tips should I get? I'll talk about that, but keep in mind um, for my, you know, what tip, what weight to get. Keep in mind that when I look at the grain window, what I'm planning on doing, or is I want my rods to cast really nice with a medium moes. That way if you go to a light mo or a heavy mo, especially in the sink tips, depending on which could be dictated on the water you're fishing, the pool, the run, the conditions, you go, whoops, my medium mo is too light I, or too heavy, I gotta go to a light mo, T8, or boy the water is up, I gotta go to a T14, I gotta go heavy, and I'm getting deep in a big long fast pool, with a little bit of practice as you get used to casting, your casting stroke or your adjustment will be very easy. With time, with practice, you can make adjustment to your casting. It'll be very easy. It'll feel almost natural going from the lights to the heavies if you're lined up to cast good in the middle. So it's not as a big adjustment you have to make to your casting and the casting stays comfortable. That's why from about seven weights on up, I always... Um, line my rods to handle the medium mo tips and we'll get this one out of the way and I will then show a couple of other another rod and line system that I use okay this is another rod that I use it's set up a little bit differently but under the same theme running line skadget head tips but there's a couple different things that I, in this this rod I got I've been using um, recently because we've had a water release on the Salmon River. The river's been up and I'm Chinook fishing so I want my flies to go really slow. I want them deep and I want them slow. I want that fly kind of hanging in their face bugging the hell out of them. I want them to have to look at that fly and think about it. The longer they got to think about it the more they have a tendency to eat it. And let's see here. Whoops. Give me one moment. All right, so much for that intermission. It's amazing how tangled up I can get standing next to my boat in the lawn. I've, we're all untangled and we're back at it. 
All right, what I want to show here is the running line. As you can see, kind of get a little background on my sleeve. There we go. This is mono. And it's about 50 pound test. And like I said earlier, it has some real advantages. For example, this reel, I have a line capacity issue. Mono solves that problem. I can still have plenty of backing and a good running line. It also an advantage is it does shoot really good. Even though it's slick, it's hard to hang on to. And I always describe it like working with a grease pig. The stuff will cast really well. Uh, this rod I often fish during the winter. So when I'm swinging during the winter, I can have my, um, my dr tip and driver head out, keep the rod high, keep the running line, this model running line off the water. And it's so light, I won't pull everything back in on me in the swing. My swing can stay right where I want it. So there's a bunch of advantages to running mono. Plus when they get beat up, you cut back to 10 feet, put it in a new loop and keep fishing. You don't have to buy a new expensive running line. So on this rod, once again, I'm set up with a Skagit, but this is a little different Skagit. These are real game changers. So what it, that game changer means that the back end is floating. Right here, you can see this nice floating color. This blue right here is an intermediate sink. And then we have a more of a type three sink right here, followed up with some T11, which is what I was running today. Um, and uh, in a couple of Sam runs fishing for Chinooks. And once again, um, if I don't get tangled up, oh, no, nope, looks like I'm not. I got a, um, about a five foot leader and today's salmon fly. So here again, it's still the same old thing. We're still running, still putting a running line on. We're doing a loop to loop with a Skagit driver head. In this case, they happen to be a real game changer. They make them in several different sink rates. I like them for big water and salmon fishing because it slows the swing down. And I'm still running my mo sink tips. So if you had a rod just set up like I just showed you earlier with a floating mo, the river goes big. All you have to do is just literally at your vehicle, out of your gearbox, since it's loop to loop, just change your driver head. You just go from your floating driver head to your, your game changer driver head and then put your tip on. This keeps the whole rod more modular, more flexible. So one of the things about the system I have, I like to adapt to the conditions as they evolve. So this is kind of set up with a um, with a game changer. Now there's some... Okay, different gadgets. Alright, like I just showed you as a game changer, here is a couple of Skagit um, driver heads too um, for different rods. And what they are is they're kind of intermediate sink, which means that the... Probably the back three feet float, then the rest of it slow sinks. These are total intermediates. So they just, yeah, a little, yeah, they're about intermediate, so they get down really good. What's really nice with those is when the water's up and you got those currents um, in the surface that get kind of confused and you got these multiple speed things, that intermediate line can cut down below that and then you get a cleaner swing. The other thing I like to use them for is winter because I can really slow my swing down with these intermediate sinks. Same thing with the game changers, I can slow my swing down. And here again is a full floating Skagit right here, but you can see they're all just um, loop to loop. So in this case, you can you can adjust if you really wanted to be picky about it. You could adjust. You could put them in your pack and make the adjustment right on the river. What often I'll do is I'll just know where I'm going to fish. I know what the water flows are for that day, and I'll go. All right, it's up. I, I really should be running my um, floating or excuse me I want to run an intermediate tip or I want to run a game changer I just loop it on and put it on um, how do I know which one to use if I want to use the floating and all that a lot of that comes from experience a lot of that comes from fishing there's a lot here folks um, at some point you got to get your waders on and do a great thing called go fishing and just work with it try it play with it experiment it's a wonderful thing when you're out in the river playing around and experimenting so these are the three main um, Skagits. Like I said, I carried the Game Changer with on a rod. These are a couple intermediates for two different rods. I think one's for a seven, one's for a nine. There's a, there's a, um, a floating Skagit. Uh, really quick on switch rods, generally speaking, I just run a floating Skagit on my switch rods. I don't mess too much with the Game Changers that often because as the river gets really big and I need to run the, the, uh, the intermediate sinks and the Game Changers, I want to run a bigger, longer, a longer rod to handle more line. So with the switch rods, I usually just set them up with skagits and just leave it to leave, with a skagit driver head and leave it the way it is. I'll talk a little bit more tips as we go on. Um, another line that I use quite a bit right here. Um, this happens to be an Airflow Scandi. Um, Scandies are this one's 
a lot of my skagits are 18 to 22 feet these things are about 30 feet so they're a little bit longer so and plus scat uh, scanies are not meant to be run with the mo tips so I generally will take a scanny style of casting as a touch and go cast so your rod's going to cast better with a little lighter line so let's just say I got a a, um, a, a rod that likes a uh, 450 uh, skagit plus a tip generally what I'm going to do is use just a 450 scanty on that rod it also scanties I'll run for leaders I'll run a full 10 12 foot leader and very often I'll run poly leaders so I'm really quick um, these things right here these are make sure they don't get these are poly leaders real makes them airflow makes them they're light so they turn over real easy the other thing with scanties is is they don't turn over big bushy water resistant flies Skagits we can turn over quite a bit of inventory big heavy tips big heavy flies lead eyes big honking intruders bunny flies Skag uh, Skagits can turn those over and deliver them Skanies won't so I'm fishing a lot of times like size 6 woolly buggers maybe a size 4 without a cone or maybe a cone at the most that might be the heaviest thing on run a lot of like size 4 size 6 wet flies classic um, steelhead flies so, and I also use it when the rivers get low and they get clear because then I can run a long leader. I can keep that line, fly line away from those fish. So that's the nice thing about scanties. They don't hit the water as hard. Think of the scanty line as a Spring Creek technic, um, spring creek style line. Skagit's more of your bass bug um, aggressive weight for get the job done line. So another time I'll use scanties. Um, yeah, most of the time they're low water stuff. Um, I might be using them a little bit more when the fish are on really small wet flies. Maybe they're starting to take like a little emergers and stuff like that late season. I'll go to Scandies. If they, the fish get really spooky and I got a small little wets and little caddis type stuff to get them to eat, uh, to get and eat, Scandies is a great choice for that. So think of it that as um, a low water line setup. Once again, all we have to do, they are just, you just loop them on. I loop off, take the Skagit heads off, loop this on. I'll either put a poly leader on the end or I'll put like a 10 or 12 foot uh, mono leader on or in this case I'll use a lot of floor covers because I might want to fly down a little bit and go. And the other thing to keep in mind with Skagit's it's usually a short, choppy, easy, sloppy cast. You can get a great one. Be mindful when you get, put your scanties on it. First you're going to get a little frustrated if you've been throwing scan, Skagit's for a while because you got to build a little bit more D-loop. Watch that rod tip. Build that D-loop. Do a touching all. Play with it for 20 30 minutes and all of a sudden you'll adjust to the cast and you'll be fine it's just scanies are a little bit more technically demanding to cast but they can give you a beautiful cast you can cover a lot of water with them and they mend a little easier once again great for low water conditions all right finally we're at the tips you know like i said all your gadgets require tips they really need the tip on the end so i'm going to start it really quick you guys with switch rods because they're very popular i use a lot of switch rods myself anybody that knows me um know that we use a lot of switch rods this right here um, medium mo so floating this is what I set all my like seven weights on off the cast the medium mo floating uh, I'm gonna say something that's gonna be a sin to the spay world especially with you guys with switch rods you know you put on your schedule you had you put on a medium mo put on a 10 foot leader we got samurai spawning everywhere we got a powerful egg bite going on or it's dead of winter and the fish are crabby and they're keyed in on bugs. Boy, you put a 10 foot leader on and you, you can do with a little bit of high stick nymphing. It's, it's a get it done rig. Yeah, we catch a lot of fish doing that because so often, what do we got to do? They don't want to chase a fly because it's either keyed in on eggs or the water's so cold and they're keyed in on bugs. You know, you can't, I never had luck telling the fish what to do, so I listen to them. And sometimes that we have to do, but these, that floating, that's, and I'll run a 10 foot leader off from that. Now here, um, really quick, is two poly leaders that I run. And they come in different sink rates. If you look at the package, and get it so it focuses in, there we go. We got different sink rates. We got like in, all right, this is like a five and a three. This is just happened to be what I grabbed. Um, they can be up to a seven second, down to a two second. I like running these off from um, my Skagit heads or excuse me, off my scanty heads. They work great. I'll still run about a five foot leader off, six foot leader off them, off them these just to keep the flat away from the dark part of the line. 
The other thing is, is they will cast off your scab just, just fine. You're just going to feel, the rod's going to feel a little light and a little snappy on you. So just, it's just because these don't have the mass as these things do. So, but I do carry a lot of these things and I often will um, shift over them to them and use them a lot. These are very handy, especially the, uh, the seven second I use a lot, the five second I use a lot, and the three second I use a lot. And that, once again, um, I like them all in, as you can tell, 10, um, 10 foot lengths. My rivers fish best with, a ten, with 10 foot tips. So once again, um, throw these off to the side. This is what I happen to have in my hands. Is hmm. well, I got a light and I got a heavy, but they also make a medium. He goes right there. So, and you'll notice that they're in like this case. It's T8. Um, that one says uh, get us so you can see it here. That's T8 and that's T14. That's generally this inches per second. They also make a T11, which I use quite a bit, and I think the reason why I don't have it here is because they're on rods right now. And they also make a T17. I think that sinks about like dog chain. So it's really heavy. Sometimes if you got to fish a lot of that, you might want to consider lighting up your Skagit driver head. You know, go down a, in one step of the grain wheel just to make it to cast a little easier because I have a, a couple rods that I specifically run T14, T17 on, and I lined them accordingly. What I did is what would work good with a medium. Um, because I'm shooting heavy and extra heavy, I just, oh, and I just primarily, that's what that rod gets used for. I just got an extra, I got a little lighter driver head so I can cast those lines a little easier. Once again, if you wanted to be um, really um, picky about it, you could actually throw an extra, you know, a little lighter driver head in your bag when you know you're going to have to deal with real heavy water in these tips. That'll make the casting easier, a little tip there. Tips for tips. Once again, I run about a five to six foot liter off from these. Well that does it. Um, pretty much wraps it up. That's how I set my rods up. I hope I made some sense there. Like I said I work everything off a of running line, running lines and then I can just um, shift my heads around to you know whatever heads I want to do to 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 uh, do the job that I need to do. So once again um, thanks for watching. I hope I made some sense. I hope I answered some questions. It's my take into how I set it up. Once again, there's no really wrong way. This what works good for us. We've had really good success with it. We kind of keep it simple. Um, there is just hordes of great lines out there. Um, some great casters that just fantastic casters that swear by them and have wonderful success with them. But for us, um, this is what works good. And also, you know, for anybody who's just starting out, keep in mind these systems I've had great success putting them in beginner hands and having them be successful with it. So that's one of the reasons why I stick with it. It's it's easy. It, so once again, folks, get out, fish, experiment, find what works good for you. This is just a start. This is not the end result. This is not the final thing. It's just a start. Go fish, experiment, have fun, catch a fish. See you underwater, folks. This is Jay at JPEC Guides in Lost River Fishing. We are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you are interested in any of our outings or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.